Hey everybody, what I want to show you today in this tutorial is how we can link up some attributes together so that way uh, when we have our clippers just one handle move, it'll actually move the other side as well. So we can see that right here under clipper cut when I use that it's actually opening and closing these clippers. It makes animating a lot easier by creating a custom attribute for that rather than going into the X value on the rotation for this and the X value on the rotation for that and having to do that individually, we can do that together. So how do I do that? Well, <clears throat> make sure I have this. What I need to do is load up my scene file make sure first that our model is cleaned up before we start to add any extra attributes. You can see right here inside of my inputs I have a lot of extra messy data. It doesn't need to be there. So first I'm going to select everything and edit, delete by type and history. Now I've got a clean model. I have my pivot point where I need it to be, where that uh, screw is holding it together. Uh, the names are not correct. So what I'm going to do is call this clipper left and I'm going to name the other one clipper right. Now for the purpose of this right here I'm using uh, sort of a camelback type idea where it's lowercase and then it gets uppercase right here. That's so it's easier to find and read right here. So I can see these a little bit easier. I think that's good. You just don't want to end up making something where um, you're, you're using different naming conventions for each object. Make sure you stick with that. This idea is pretty good. You can also use like an underscore in between these um, for easier clarification. I think this is fine. <clears throat> so what I need to do first is pick one of these and go into my animation, um, sorry, my Windows animation editors right here. Go to the expression editor. We've used this when we animated our car in intro to animation to make the wheels move. We're going to do similar things like that in here. Uh, to do that, what we need to do is go into our rotate X because that's the, um, the rotation that allows for this to open and close. And inside of here, we need to add an expression. That expression is going to be something like this. So I just pasted that. Um, this is saying clipper right. That's what I'm using right here. I need this to rotate on the X. And you can see that that's the attribute that I'm using. So we can even copy and paste that right into here. And when I am rotating that on the X axis, what I want this to do is have the clipper on the left rotate on the x-axis as well, but I don't want it to follow the same um, rotation. I actually want it to rotate in the opposite direction. So that's where we have that times negative one. Now I'm terrible at math, but hopefully for all of you, you should be able to understand that we, when we multiply an object's uh, number by a negative, it will make it go in the opposite direction. And that's what that's saying. So I'm gonna create that. And let's give this a try. If I rotate, Let's try the other one. So this one will notice you'll have a uh, purple spot. So let's grab the left and see what this does. Okay, so now that's actually opening and closing. So this is driving this one. Can't move this one, but we can move this one. That's good, but the problem is that um, it's going a little bit too far, right? It's going more extreme than I want that to be. And it's not so easy. We can't really find that in here. So what we're going to do is go into a new section here. We're going to select this thing, go into modify, and we're going to add a attribute. So this, sorry, attribute. So our attribute that we're going to add is going to be called clipper, and we'll call that cut. My minimum needs to be a zero, and let's just say the maximum of that would be a 10. I'm going to hit add, and watch what happens over here. If I add that, there it is, clipper cut, it's here. It's not doing anything though. I can't, I can't use this number. And the reason why it's not really linked into anything. So what I need to do is something new. If I go into my animation, so we're not in modeling anymore, we're going in the ribbon, we're going to animation. 
and uh, we're gonna go or sorry the drop down we're gonna go into <clears throat> key and we're gonna go to set driven key and then we're gonna press this little box right here okay so what this is going to do is for me to have something that's the driver and what is going to be driven. So the driver is going to be the thing that when I use this uh, control, it's going to make something else do something. So the driver in this instance, we're going to load that driver. I have it selected right now. And there it is. It's clipper left and it's going to be clipper cut. That's what I want to be my driver. What I want it to drive is the rotate on the X axis. So if I were to do this, and right now rotate X is at zero and clipper cut is at zero. So I like that. So if I end up hitting key, watch what happens. You're gonna see a little blue uh, spot show up here. So there's a little rectangle right here saying that it's being driven by something, or at least it's moving around by something else. Now, I need to go into my values here and let's say that we have it at a 25. Okay, that's going the wrong direction, so let's go negative 25. And let's call that my extreme. So in here, under clipper cut, let's call that 10. Okay, if you set that before setting this one, it'll uh, go backwards. So first, set the clipper cut, like I just did, and then we'll go to rotate, negative 25. Okay, so you should see a 10 in clipper cut, and a negative 25 in the rotate X. And we're gonna hit key one more time. Okay, so now let's look at this. I have my clipper cut set at 10. Let's left click drag down. And notice that's closing and opening. I can't go any further than that. That's great. Now, let's clean this up. If I don't wanna accidentally select any of these other pieces here, what I can do is hide them. So I'm not gonna to need to use my rotate or my uh, scale on these individual components anymore. So I can go inside, select all these. So left click, hold down shift, and then left click again, and right click, and then we can hide this. So we're just looking for hide selected. There we go. And now I still have the ability to use my clipper values, but I've gotten rid of some of that noise that's on here. So that's pretty helpful. Now we could even clean that up further by hiding these as well. So that is the only value that we'd have. And let's say that we take this whole object right now, which has a lot of other information on that. But if I hit control G on that, and now if I call this object my clippers, what I can do with this now is if I have the entire clippers group selected, I can move this thing around, change the orientation of that, and then if I want to, I can grab that one clippers left and open and close. That's because my attribute is uh, a custom one and that's all that's, that I can have in there. That's extremely helpful because it cleans up um, everything else when we're animating. That's it.